We're in the middle of an AI boom, you know that. But here's what makes this different from previous tech cycles. One company has basically become the foundation for everything that's happening right now. That company is Nvidia and the timing matters because the decisions that companies make in the next 12 to 18 months will determine who stays competitive and who gets left behind. We're talking about governments, tech giants and research labs all restructuring their entire strategies around Nvidia's roadmap. This is driven by the people actually building out AI and they've made their choice. This video breaks down why that's happening, why demand keeps climbing beyond anyone's predictions and why every doubt about Nvidia keeps collapsing when you look at what's actually going on in the industry. So let's start with the most important piece why everyone depends on NVIDIA in the first place. NVIDIA has become the default platform for anyone building advanced AI systems. Walk into OpenAI, Anthropic, Tesla's AI team, or any major robotics lab, and you'll see the same thing. Everyone's building on NVIDIA, not just using the chips, I mean, their entire workflow runs on NVIDIA's tools. And here's why that happened. When you're training a model, you're working inside NVIDIA's environment. When you're testing it, NVIDIA simulators, running experiments, NVIDIA's frameworks, deploying at scale, NVIDIA's infant stack. They own every step of the process. That familiarity creates massive inertia. Switching away doesn't just mean buying different hardware, it means rebuilding years of accumulated expertise and tooling. For most teams, that's basically unthinkable. NVIDIA also delivers something developers need badly, reliability. When a new model architecture drops or someone invents a better inference technique, teams assume NVIDIA will support it without forcing them through a painful migration. That predictability matters when you're planning projects that cost millions or billions of dollars. And here's where it compounds. The more people build on NVIDIA, the more everyone around them needs to stay compatible. Over time, this compatibility chain becomes a trap door. Once you're inside the NVIDIA ecosystem, leaving it means breaking everything you've already built. Decisions about data centers, about hiring, about long-term roadmaps, they all get shaped by NVIDIA's ecosystem. As AI scales up, organizations can't afford uncertainty in the foundation of their most expensive products. NVIDIA removes that uncertainty. Their hardware, software, networking, compilers, and optimization all work together in a way that rewards you for staying inside the system. This isn't a temporary advantage that competitors can just copy, it's structural. The industry has matured around NVIDIA's rhythm and that rhythm now dictates how fast breakthroughs can actually happen. When the foundation of progress aligns with a single platform, that platform becomes the center of gravity for everything. Now, I'm not exaggerating the dependency. Inside NVIDIA, executives keep saying the same thing. They literally cannot make chips fast enough. Jensen Huang, NVIDIA's CEO, is doing something unusual right now. He's asking TSMC to ramp up production on both current gen and next gen chips simultaneously. That's not how this normally works. Chip production is expensive and risky. You don't commit to that kind of capacity unless you have absolute certainty about future demand. That certainty only shows up when customers are signing multi-year deal commitments, meaning they're not just buying chips, they're locking themselves into NVIDIA's platform for the long haul. This growing alignment between customers and NVIDIA tells us something important. The industry views them as a core dependency, not just a vendor you can swap out if something cheaper comes along. Cloud providers, AI labs, autonomous vehicle companies, national research programs, they're all building future plans that assume NVIDIA's roadmap sets the pace they need to follow. When organizations design multi-year strategies around a single supplier's innovation cycles, that supplier becomes part of their identity. They're committing to NVIDIA's vision of where computation is heading. This creates lock-in, but not the contract kind, it's the trust kind. The deeper the dependence gets, the more businesses sink their entire engineering culture to NVIDIA's pace of improvement. And as demand rises, this gets even tighter. Even if someone builds a faster chip, they still need to match NVIDIA's reliability, its software stack, its decade of developer muscle memory, and that's the part no one can copy. And that internal confidence shows up in a really visible way, their backlogs. Because backlogs aren't a supply problem, they're a demand signal. The backlogs for NVIDIA's highest end systems keep growing, and that tells us something important about how the world is building AI capacity. Every quarter they're wrong, they keep underestimating how much compute the world actually wants for both training and inference. Backlogs form when demand grows faster than production can scale. In NVIDIA's case, 
This pattern has repeated across multiple product generations. This isn't happening because NVIDIA failed to expand output. It's happening because customers are scaling their ambitions faster than even optimistic forecasts predicted. Inside cloud platforms, teams responsible for capacity planning have been revisiting their forecasts over and over. Why? Because user demand for AI power applications keeps accelerating. Once everyday services start relying on AI models, the workload becomes continuous instead of seasonal. The computational strain just compounds. Enterprises are hitting the same wall. Once they see what AI can do for productivity and automation, they scale way beyond their initial proof of concept projects. These expansions require predictable hardware patterns, so they're reserving infrastructure early, locking in supply for future phases before chips even ship. Frontier Labs add even more pressure. They're continuously increasing the scale of their research, training larger models, running more expensive experiments, deploying more advanced techniques. All of this requires dependable access to massive compute pools. That creates long-term commitments that show up in NVIDIA's reservation pipeline months in advance. Companies are reversing chips before their manufacturing because missing a cycle could set them back an entire generation. That's panic buying dressed up as strategy. The backlog shows it's a strategic resource. Companies that understand this are moving early, reserving as much capacity as they can. That behavior makes demand look relentless, but really it's just a reflection of how essential this has become. NVIDIA sits at the center of that momentum, turning supply constraints into a signal of structural strength rather than a weakness. The backlog story gets even more interesting when you look at who's placing these orders. The biggest cloud providers in the world, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Oracle, have essentially locked themselves into NVIDIA's roadmap. These companies are spending billions expanding their data centers and every single expansion is designed around NVIDIA's architecture. Here's why that matters. Hyperscalers compete on AI capacity now. If Microsoft Azure can offer better AI inference than AWS, that's a competitive advantage. If Google Cloud can train models faster, that attracts customers. The race forces them to stay current with NVIDIA's latest releases. That creates an interesting dynamic. The hyperscalers need NVIDIA, and they also need NVIDIA to keep advancing on schedule. If NVIDIA slows down, the entire cloud AI market slows down with it. If NVIDIA accelerates, everyone else has to speed up to keep pace. This dependency shows up in capital expenditure numbers. Cloud providers are allocating massive portions of their infrastructure budget specifically to NVIDIA systems. Their multi-year commitments that assume NVIDIA remains the technological ceiling they need to reach. The hyperscalers have essentially become extensions of NVIDIA's distribution model. When NVIDIA moves, they move. Their partners anchored to the same technological trajectory. That gives NVIDIA enormous influence over the pace and direction of cloud AI development. But that's only part of the story. Let's talk about what's happening in robotics and autonomous systems. The robotics industry is entering a phase where AI powered systems are moving from labs into real world deployments, and that's creating a new category of sustained demand. Companies building autonomous vehicles, warehouse robots, humanoid robots, and industrial automation systems are all standardizing on NVIDIA's platforms for both development and deployment. Robotics has a unique demand profile. Unlike cloud AI, where compute happens in data centers, robots need to process information in real time on the edge in unpredictable environments. That requires specialist hardware that can handle complex perception, decision-making, and control loops simultaneously. NVIDIA builds specifically for this. Their platforms let robotic companies develop in simulation, train their models on massive GPU clusters, and then deploy the same software stack onto robots running NVIDIA Edge Compute. That end-to-end -end workflow reduces friction dramatically. Companies like Amazon, Walmart, and logistic providers are deploying thousands of AI-powered robots that need real-time perception and decision-making. Industrial manufacturers are doing the same with robotic arms that adapt to changing conditions rather than following fixed programs. The humanoid robotic wave is just starting. Companies like Figa, Tesla, and several others are building general purpose robots that could eventually operate in homes, factories, and service environments. These systems require enormous amounts of training compute and sophisticated edge inference hardware. NVIDIA is positioned to capture both. What makes this particularly interesting for NVIDIA is that robotics demand compounds over time. Each deployed robot generates new data that feeds back into training pipelines, which improves models, which enables more deployment, 
It's a flywheel that accelerates as the industry matures. And robotics companies are making long-term commitments. When you're designing a robot platform, you're choosing an ecosystem you'll build on for years. That creates the same locking dynamics we see in cloud and enterprise, but with even longer time horizons. Now let's talk about what happened with some institutional investors and why it doesn't matter as much as headlines suggest. Some institutional investors trimmed NVIDIA positions recently, and that created headlines. While a handful of funds reduced exposure, the overwhelming majority of large institutional investors maintained or increased their NVIDIA holdings. Total institutional ownership remains at historically high levels. So here's what actually happened. A few high-profile funds took some profits after NVIDIA's massive run-up. That's normal portfolio management, when a position becomes too large relative to your fund size, you trim it to manage risk. It doesn't mean they lost confidence in the company. What matters more is what the majority of institutional capital is doing. And that capital continues treating NVIDIA as a foundational holding. Funds that specialize in long-term technological transformation view NVIDIA as a core pillar of the AI economy. They maintain exposure because the company sits as the intersection of several powerful trends like accelerated computing, frontier model training, next generation simulation, and rapid deployment of intelligence into consumer and enterprise applications. Infrastructure funds have also been entering the AI sector with major commitments to build new data centers. These projects require specialist hardware and the contractors designing these facilities consistently build around NVIDIA systems. That reinforces institutional belief that NVIDIA will remain a central beneficiary of global AI infrastructure build out. Many institutional investors also understand that NVIDIA's value is about the entire ecosystem the company built. They view the stock as a bet on the world's growing dependence on computation, not as a traditional semiconductor play. That perspective encourages them to hold large positions even during volatility. Short-term selling by one or two funds doesn't change the long-term trajectory. What matters is the behavior of the broader institutional base and that base continues treating NVIDIA as a foundational asset in the shift towards an AI-powered economy. The rotation of one or two funds becomes irrelevant when the overwhelming majority of institutional capital remains aligned with the company's future. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.